I think you're really gonna be surprised how easy it is to develop your own black and white film with coffee. That's right, today we're making caffeinol. Hey there, and welcome to the latest addition to the Matt Marash YouTube channel, DIY Darkroom. Every few weeks, we're gonna be up here in the darkroom getting hands-on with our film photographic process. Before we get started though, why would you wanna DIY something in the darkroom? Isn't that what labs are for? Well, with the price of film and other materials being pretty much a one-way street, it's a good idea to get a handle on the process, not just to save money, but maybe to learn a little bit and kind of synthesize all these other things that we've experienced. For some folks, there's just a satisfaction of building it yourself, making it yourself. And for that, DIYing in the darkroom is a perfect fit. But for other folks, myself included, we can watch something, hear something, or read something time and time again, and it just doesn't stick. It isn't until we roll up our sleeves, get our hands dirty, that we really learn and say, oh, that's how that happened. And for me, that's why I love DIYing things in the darkroom. And what better way to start this series than one of the most accessible and affordable DIYs in film photography, and that is Caffeinol. Caffeinol relies on a unique interaction between three core ingredients. You can add more if you want to, but this is what we're going to be working with today. We're going to need some instant coffee. You could use regular coffee, but instant coffee is a lot more consistent for our main ingredient, caffeic acid. Now, caffeic acid means, wait, caffeine. So we can't use decaf coffee. This 227 gram or eight ounce container was about three US dollars at my local Aldi. Our next active ingredient for caffeinol is going to be ascorbic acid, also known as vitamin C. We can buy this in white tablet form or get a more concentrated white powder. Um, we're not gonna need a lot of this, but a lot of these DIY chemicals will be more bulk than you would use for one and done. Kind of like when you buy sugar or flour, you're never gonna buy two teaspoons of sugar, you're gonna buy a few pounds of it and use it as you go. That's how a lot of these are gonna go. And finally, our third active ingredient that we're gonna need for this is something to help create a higher pH environment than just water. And that's gonna be our sodium carbonate, also known as washing soda. You can find this in a few different forms. Uh, you can find it in like powder or flakes. This is a white powder form. You can also get a box of flakes in your uh, home goods aisle where you would find like detergents and soaps. But what you wanna avoid are crystals. Those are gonna be harder to bring into solution and mix yourself. If you wanna follow along at home, you're gonna need those three active ingredients. So we're gonna need caffeinated instant coffee, vitamin C, sodium carbonate, you're going to need a roll of exposed black and white film. Here I have some Ilford Pan F Plus in medium format. You're going to need a film developing reel and a daylight or light tight tank for developing. You're gonna need a teaspoon for measuring things out. And to hold our liquids and mix, you're gonna need something that measures in cups, but preferably something that measures in milliliters. And finally, we're gonna need some water and some fixer. Pre-made fixer is fine, but Stay tuned, get subscribed, and I'll show you how to make your own fixer that's a lot cheaper. So those are the core components you're gonna need to make things happen. You don't need to do this in a darkroom. Um, it's nice if you can have it done over a sink, but a darkroom sink isn't necessary. One of the first ways to gain more consistency in your process is to ditch that tap water, especially if you're on a well or you have really hard water, go ahead and pick up some distilled water. It's relatively inexpensive at a little over a dollar per gallon, which gets a lot of mileage for what we're doing. Another optional tool that makes life easier, we're gonna measure things in teaspoons, but I'm also going to give you the gram weights of it. So if you have a very tiny gram scale or even like a cooking scale that goes down to grams, tenths of grams or milligrams, that would be really, really good. Some more precise measurement vehicles like graduated cylinders and flasks, these are gonna come in handy if you do a lot of this DIY stuff. Stemware like this is relatively inexpensive, but it's still an extra cost. And finally, one of the more premium things that I recently picked up because I'm stepping up my DIY game is one of these heated stirring mixers. This has a little magnetic motor in here and it's gonna spin this tiny little magnet around and also has a heating base for some of those more complex DIYs. Safety disclaimer for today, none of the stuff we're working with is super harmful. Just make sure you don't put any of it directly into your body, don't splash any into your eyes and don't go huffing any of it directly in. If you need extra precaution when you're mixing these powders, have some safety goggles on. 
this stuff you don't really need to unless you splash it around and we're going to use some simple nitrile gloves there are some biodegradable gloves if you feel better about having those and that's going to be about it don't drink this stuff and if you are on like a well or a septic system when you're done with your fixer we're just simply going to collect that and uh, set it off to the side Okay, I got my gloves on. I have my graduates, scale, stir, and dry ingredients out. Let's talk about the different types of caffeinol that are out there. There's many different varieties, and those are all dependent on the ratios of our three main ingredients, our coffee, our ascorbic acid, and our washing soda, or our sodium carbonate. The purity of those ingredients, the ratio of those ingredients, the temperature of the working solution and how long you use it will all determine how our process goes. Anytime we're DIYing things and we're working with a chemical reaction, we're always worried about time, temperature, and amount. Also concentration, dilution, that sort of thing. When we vary those, we create a different blend. The specific blend of caffeinol I'm making today is known as caffeinol CM. And this uses, per liter, we're going to need 54 grams of washing soda. We're going to need 16 grams of vitamin C or ascorbic acid, and we're going to need 40 grams of instant coffee. Now, since my film developing tank is only gonna do one roll of medium format film, I can go ahead and cut that in half. So I'm going to use 500 mils, which will then make my new measurements 27 grams of soda, eight grams of vitamin C or 20 grams of coffee. If you don't have a gram scale, you can also measure that out in teaspoons. Roughly every five grams is gonna be one teaspoon. If you have one of those baking spoons where you can level it off, that's even easier. Now that I've got my dry ingredients weighed out, my carbonate, my vitamin C, and my instant coffee, and I'm gonna add some water to it so I can start dissolving my ingredients into solution. Turn our stir bar on a little bit. And this just makes life, yeah, really, really, really easy. We're gonna add our carbonate, add it slowly, let it go into solution. When you add a lot of sodium or potassium carbonate to water very quickly, it creates an exothermic reaction. So it will heat up a little bit, but just stir it and stir it and it will eventually cool down. Once a little time has passed, and you see the solution become a little bit more clear, go ahead and start adding your vitamin C powder to that solution slowly. You will see bubbles form when you do this, and we wanna keep stirring this until most of those bubbles are gone. It's been another couple minutes and I've stopped the stir. The micro bubbles have stopped forming. Now it's time to add our instant coffee. This is a good time to mention that caffeinol is a one-shot developer. So you do have to weigh out and mix this stuff every time. You can combine the dry ingredients together, but once it touches water, it's getting oxygen introduced. And that is going to start the uh, deterioration of this product. It's usually good for anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes after mixing. So you have to get to work pretty quickly. All right, once that is nice and clear, no bubbles, I'm gonna start to add my coffee and then I'm gonna start stirring again from there. There it goes, it's getting brown and it's gonna get pretty nasty smelling at this point. Add a little bit of water to bring it up to 500 mils. This definitely smells like the worst coffee ever. Once our caffeinol is mixed, we're gonna want to let as many of these bubbles settle as possible, which means leaving it for anywhere from five to 15 minutes. But you wanna use this within 30 minutes of mixing to get the most efficacy out of it. So we're gonna let this sit here. This is a perfect time to darken the lights, put a towel under the door, whatever you need to do to get light tight so we can load our film onto our reel and place that into our light tight tank. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes since we shut the lights off. I have my Ilford Pan F Plus in its light tight daylight tank and our Caffeinol CM has had some time to mellow out. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my darkroom timer here 
for 15 minutes. I've seen good times between 12 and 20 minutes. That's all part of the experimentation and the DIY process. I'm gonna open my tank and I'm gonna go ahead and add my developer. You wanna add about 10 seconds for pouring time. So you wanna pour quickly, but like not so fast, you form a lot of excess bubbles. So we've poured. Now we're gonna start our agitation procedure. So I'm gonna start with the first 30 seconds of agitation up and down pretty smoothly. There we go. Okay, we're gonna rinse, lather, and repeat with inversions happening every 60, you can do five to 10 seconds every 60, or you can do a few inversions every 30 seconds, whatever you prefer. Development is now complete. We are going to pour out our spent developer. Oh, that is ever so nasty. There we go, and now we need to completely stop it by adding some water. I recommend using a water stop bath because it's, uh, yeah, it doesn't create any excess bubbling or anything that we don't want out of our film. With our film process stopped with that running water, we're gonna go ahead and fill her up with some of that rapid fixer. This is diluted one plus five, so one part concentrate to five parts water, and we're gonna pop that in for about five minutes. Our fixing time is done. Let's go ahead and dump that out. It's probably gonna have a little coffee stain on her. Yep, it's still gonna be reusable, but ew, does it look nasty. Oh yeah, we gotta rinse off this excess fix as well. I shouldn't get so ahead of myself. Last step before the reveal, I've got some water in the tank. I'm gonna add a few drops of photo flow and I'm gonna get this mixing around so I can squeegee it and hang it to dry. If you don't have photo flow, you can also substitute that for a lightly or unscented uh, detergent, dish soap, anything like that. All right, let's see if we got pictures. Oh, look at that. Get my handy dandy squeegees here. You can also use um, an unused sponge, two fingers is good, or you can just get a fancy set of these film squeegees. There we go. And flip it, squeegee the other side, make it easy to hang. So dip, push, squeege. And flip it one more time. We're gonna hang it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I've got 12 square photos. Uh, these were taken at a local metro park with my old Hasselblad 500C and I'm seeing exposures on there. How about that? A few simple ingredients and we're off to the races developing our own black and white film with a developer we made ourselves. Is it as good as maybe commercial developing? No, but with a little time and a little patience and a little experimenting, we can do some cool stuff that in the long run can save us a lot of money and help better understand what we're doing with our cameras and then in the dark room. Any of you Caffinol heads watching wanna give me some pointers on this, I'm happy to hear them. Uh, or if you have any questions about any of this Caffinol stuff that I did today, let me know down below in the comments. For the longer form stuff, it'll take me a minute, but you can always feel free to shoot me an email, darkroomquestions at gmail.com. I wanna thank you again for stopping by and we'll catch you next time for more DIY Darkroom.